risk. Everyone has risk. Whether it be the risk of losing something, theft, or even the risk of being injured while riding a bike. It is everywhere, but not everything has the same value. Insurance companies work to shoulder that risk for you, and to do that, they have to assign values to risk. This is called valuation, which insurance companies use to specify the value of their company's obligations. Valuation will also determine solvency, the company's ability to pay the claims of policyholders. Other than that, valuation is also used to recognize profit over the term of insurance contracts. You see, insurance companies are a for-profit enterprise, meaning they have to make some sort of profit. Therefore, they have to create an internal business model that collects more cash than it pays out to customers while factoring in the cost of running their business. In order to make a profit margin, the insurance companies need to do valuation annually. There are primarily two valuation methods for reserves being used today. In net premium valuation or NPV, net premiums are the amounts necessary to pay benefits according to certain mortality and interest assumptions. Company expenses are not reflected in the net premium reserve, nor are there any explicit margins for profits or adverse experience. In other words, NPV reserve equals to present value of expected future benefit minus present value of expected future net premiums. While using NPV, surplus is going to depend on four things. First, the differences between office premium, the amount expected to be received by the insurer, and net premium, the income earned by insurance companies. Second, incurred expenses, since surplus occurs when income exceeds expenses paid. Third, assumptions on mortality and investment. Fourth, lapse and surrender experience. Note that lapse and surrender profits are not capitalized in the valuation process. While calculating NPV reserves, we also need to make mortality rate and discount assumptions. The mortality rate and discount assumptions are the same assumptions that we use to calculate premiums. On the other hand, gross premium valuation reserves or GPV reserves are calculated on a prospective basis using natural reserve assumptions or expected assumptions. They are the present value of future benefits and expenses subtracted by the present value of future gross premiums. In other words, GPV reserve equals to present value of expected future benefit plus present value of expected future expenses minus present value of expected future gross premiums or net premiums plus loading. If you start dissecting the gross premium valuation reserve formulas, some things become immediately apparent. The gross premium itself can be split into three component parts, the net benefit reserve premium, the net expense reserve premium, and the profit portion of the premium. So, in gross premium valuation reserve, it capitalizes all the loading for bonuses and expense in the premium basis. There are at least two ways from which a GPV can be approached. The first is ongoing value and the second is the current exit value. Ongoing value is the value of the assets and liabilities to the insurance company on an ongoing basis, and under the ongoing value basis, the use of best estimate assumptions can be justified. The second the current exit value is the market value of the assets and liabilities. Under the current exit value basis, 
a margin on the assumptions would be necessary to reflect the buyer's risk appetite because it's very unlikely that the regulator will be happy to accept GPV with no margins as the regulator is concerned with solvency. GPV reserves need more assumptions than NPV, which are mortality rate, discount rate, expenses, and lapse rate assumptions. The mortality rate, expenses, and lapse rate assumptions are based on the company's experience, while the discount rate assumptions is based on risk-free rate, which means, for example, that the rates can adjust itself to government bonds. And those were the two valuation methods being used today to calculate reserves. While both have their own strengths and weaknesses, it is the actor's job to understand both methods to use the right one for the right time. We hope you learned something today and hope to see you again. Thank you.